Thanks for joining us on a brand new episode of 420 Grams. Uh, as we are coming together today to pay our respects to arguably one of the greatest ever footballers uh, India has ever seen, the late Chunni Goswami, who passed away a couple of days back. And uh, the way of paying respect to a footballer by at least people who love the game is by talking about him, talking about his legend and what he's done on the field and also off the field. So much so that what he did in the 60s and 50s still is spoken about right now in 2019, 2020 and 2021 as we move along. Uh, my name is Arjun. I'm joined by Jaydeep Basu, Sadhan Rani. As we will take a close look at Chunni Goswami's career, not just Chunni Goswami's career, because if we're talking about him, then you have to talk about that team from the 1950s and the 1960s, arguably the greatest ever team. India has ever seen, which has gone on to win so much at the international level. But sir, before we get into all of that, uh, Jadeep sir, uh, Kolkata me keeping in mind lockdown ho hai hai. Uh, how have uh, proceedings gone forward as far as uh, final rights and uh, laying rest to Chunni sir? Yeah, very unfortunately, Arjun, it was a very very low key affair because hmm. of the lockdown. And yeah. uh, if you look at things in the last 40 days. The city uh, of joy has lost two of its greatest footballers, and for none of them they could they could they could they could really pay their respect. People couldn't come out, and in in a, and in, when it comes to Chuni Goswami, it is very unfortunate that his body even could not be brought to the Mohan Bagan Club tent, which mm. is which is which has always been a tradition whenever a Mohan Bagan or East Bengal player. Guys who has played considerable for considerable time for the for the one of the two clubs, his body is taken to the maidan, at least in a, a kept at the club for a couple of hours, maybe an hour, so that people can come and pay their respect. But Chuni Goswami, Chuni Chunidap's funeral <coughs> is being attended by a, only a dozen people. Hmm. It is it is highly unfortunate. And very very unexpected. Had it been the normal time, yeah, we would have, we would have seen a huge huge crowd. Uh, in in keeping in light uh, the circumstances we're living in right now, so how uh, his club? He's of course been a one club man, which is unheard of in these days. And he spent all his playing career in Mohan Bagan. Uh, what sort of a tribute have Mohan Bagan given in whatever limited way? Is possible in these current See, times. See, Mohan Bagan, all all of them have spoken very highly. Mohan Bagan, former players have, have. See, now all of them, what can they do? They can, they can, they can sit at home and speak on Skype or video call or whatever. Mm. I think nobody could come out. Come out. Uh, I think uh, one of one or two people went to his house to his to 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 meet his <laughs> wife. Uh, uh, that's all. Nothing more. Lot of lot of tributes have come. But so far, they have not been able to hold any any meeting, or maybe after the lockdown, they will hold meetings and all. So overall, it was a very quiet affair, which in not not because of anything else, but because of the as you said, because of the current circumstances. Sorry, I'm just going to move on from here. Any tribute that is really uh, touching uh, in in the way it's been written or spoken about of all the tributes coming in. Lots of uh, uh, lots of tributes uh, uh, have come in. Lots of them are also touching. But I I liked one by Balaram T Balaram Tulsidas mm. Balaram, his mm. colleague, and one I liked by by another of his colleague that is Franco from Goa. Yeah. Who who, who described him as the golden boy of Indian football. Mm. And Balaram said one thing, which I he has said it previously also several times. But in the in the context of this particular incident, he said, "I came to Calcutta to play. I was in Hyderabad, looking at him only, because in Ennakulam uh, uh, National Championship he played so well, and he had so many fans. He was like a like a matinee idol." So I thought, why not I also go to Calcutta and play like him, so that one day people will be after him. So I thought it's a great tribute coming from a colleague who is who is regarded as good as him. Yeah. So basically, uh, Chunni Goswami had a part to play in that uh, famous trio being formed for Indian yeah. football. To some extent, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, since we're of course talking about Mohan Bagan and uh, what all he's done, not just for Mohan Bagan but for Indian football, there is one story because uh, what you and Siddhant did 
uh, you got in touch with the great subhash bhomik who's of course uh, was a young cub who was starting off when chunni goswami was at his peak as far as pohan bagan is concerned and of course subhash bhomik has then gone on and earned laurels playing for india he's also a celebrated coach and he's nurtured the future stars of india someone like an i am vijayan and uh, one story that really stood out from that conversation was when subhash bhomik said when i was playing for a club in the calcutta league and we were winning 1-0 versus sporting, sporting union. union sporting union yeah sporting union, union 1-0 yeah. versus mohan bagan but mm. then chunni goswami decided to take matters in his own hands and he yeah. scored not one not two not three but six goals 6-1 they finally beat them so that was the kind of conversation siddhant and jaydeep sir has had and uh, it's time we throw to that because subhash bhomik talking not just about chunni goswami but talking about indian football and where the next chunni goswami will ever come if ever when chunni goswami last played for mohan bagan uh, i played against him i was playing in a club called sporting union uh, a junior most team uh, and that that match i scored a goal in the very few minutes minutes of the starting of the game and after that uh, chunni goswami took the rain in his hand uh, rather than in his at his feet and scored a hat trick and made there was a guy called sitesh dash he is also no more there he uh, helped him to score another hat trick so he turns us 6-1 so that from that onwards uh, chunni goswami uh, was our hero you answered me one thing i wrote after peter banerjee's demands someone questioned me if this guy is peter banerjee chunni goswami balram they were born today they would have been as effective greats are always effective anywhere everywhere i agree yeah. because today's generation the support they are getting let me tell you yeah. the nutrition support the uh, gym support mm. the psychological support these these days there was no yeah i will ask uh, now since we have started with chunida with chuni goswami i will ask him to make a imaginary thing if if i play in 442 that 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 say formation indian football team i would i would like to see them play always hmm. what do put chuni goswami in that team and who should be with him in as as attackers You are, you are talking about only the attacking line. Yeah, mostly, uh, mostly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, Pika Banerjee. Or who would be left. the players around him? Yeah. I'm right, Pika Banerjee. Left, uh. Tulsi Das Balram. In front of him, Indar Singh. Just behind of him, Chunni Goswami. So there is no place for your favorite footballer, I am Vijayan, in the team. Uh, no, 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 no. But, I I I love him like anything, but uh, these four yeah. names I took. Uh, I am Bijan could score from a uh, chance which is has got fifteen uh, percent chance, but Indar Singh could score from no percent of chance. Indar Singh could score a goal. Uh, uh, many years ago, I remember at least ten years ago, you 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 told me. that if i if i if i make a make a all time india 11 then i am vision i cannot think anything apart from i am vision no, no, you I even kept, be, kept i am vision uh, will be my team in my team in my team yes another guy you you guys don't mention he, he was a player from 80s his name is shubhip chatterjee he will be also in my team So you have seen uh, uh, Chunni Goswami play. You have seen PK Banerjee play. You I'm playing against him. I have played, played against him. Against him. You, you yourself, you 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 yourself remained a very famous player, and you played along with lots of famous players like Indar Singh, like uh, like a, lo- a lot of other other players. And I don't and know why still, you are not still, naming Mama Habib. Yeah, Habib Bhai, of course, and. Uh, what made you made you think the since you said a lot of things about the current indian football what made you think that i am vision will still be there why because he has got all the talents 
But he was little behind of these four players. He, I am, will be, Biju will be always in my... If you give me a 16 players, like, like those days used to be more, not more, no more than 16, he will be in 16. If you give me 18, he will be in 18. Someday he may, he may uh, 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 in the in the in the in the thing is not delivering goods. I as a coach, I love to be the coach of this team, and I will take in, in the and uh, put. I am in in that place. <laughs> this is a, these are, these are cost, good options it, to have. I think. It doesn't cost. <laughs> it doesn't cost to dream. <laughs> My last question to you. Uh, why why Chuni Goswami stand out from others on the pitch as a footballer? Many, many things. You answered me one thing. We have heard in Indian football that he's like second journal, Chandrashar Pushad Manoran and Bacha. We I have heard that Naimuddin is a second Darun Gosh. People sometimes call me. Yes, he's, he's second to P.J. Banerjee, like his thrust, thrust, his speed, his power, shooting. Have you ever heard anyone is telling someone he's a second chini? I haven't seen. I haven't heard. His lightning speed with fabulous touch, his peripheral vision and his shooting power, his volley, let me, through you, let, I don't know how many viewers are there. I compare him with Zineb and Zidka. Don't anyone can laugh. If Zuniko Shai would have born today, with getting all this scientific support, support nutrition support, all this uh, shake, multivitamins, and uh, I know what Sunil and all these players use as all, all lists are, are with me. Chuni Goshami. Jadip, do you remember the goal? Jinnabin Jinnabin scored for real against Leverkusen. Yeah. The second goal with that height, the ten, 5 foot 10 inches guy. From his, you have described from his, it. From, described. His, from, his, yeah. from his shoulder, shoulder, shoulder height. Shoulder length. Yeah. He took that volley and it was a goal. I saw in, in a Champions League Goswami. final, no less. Champions League final. He, <laughs> yeah. I saw Chuni Goswami day in, day out to score from that height uh, to take a volume. And he used to in practice for a few months, one or two months, he became coach of Mumbai. He wanted us to uh, do all these things. And when we could not deliver, he used to laugh at, laugh at us and say, Duh, you guys are useless. We used to tell him that if he could have do it, then we would have been Chuni Goswami. We are not. So, Chuni Goswami, Pika Banerjee, Balram, General Singh, Arun Ghosh, they, they, were, they have a rebirth. And if I become, as I could take Rahim Shab's place, my life would have been made. <laughs> so, uh, Swaza, Swaza, who are you? We have been. For the last one month, we have been we have been writing and talking a lot about lots of obituaries, lots obituaries, of obituaries. <laughs> obituaries, and Pradipda and now Chunida, everything, uh, and we are talking about things which happened 60 years ago, close to 60 years ago. 1962 yes. is 50, 58 years ago. Yes. And uh, as as all of you have discussed, we have heard from you, all you people, that how how. Uh, what, what do you call it, how skillful uh, uh, ball players they were, how uh, dazzling was their skills, how good was their volley or their headers or their right footers or left footers or whatever. And their success at the international level. And then came the next generation where you, you people were there in 1970 Asian Games, you won the bronze medal and you, you, had a, you had a team forward line which was full of goal scorers. You yourself was a, a prolific goal scorer. Then it had Magan Singh, it had uh, 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 not in the Singh, it had it had Amar Bahadur, it had Sham Thapa, it had who's, lots of players in the team. And after that, we saw, uh, we found it in the eight, seven, it was 70s. Then in the 80s, then in the 90s, we saw I am Vijayan coming. Then we, 
biting booty are coming. Why suddenly it has dried up? Can you please tell us? 60 years so, if we had so many brilliant ball players who could score goals at the international level with ease and regularly, 60 years down the line, why it has come down to only one footballer who can score goals at the international level? In football, there's, there's a great man called Bolaida Strategy who, on his own, he created Shunigoshan. Mr. Bagashkum created Poli Banerjee. Mr. Dasho Mitri, Mitro created Arun Ghosh. Same as Mr. Balram was created by... I Intentionally, I'm using the, this word, created, because they were born. But individually, these people took care of them and taught them the basic grammar of football so brilliantly that they were ball and them you could not separate. In modern football, in today's Indian football scenario, I go to sometimes I go to so-called academies, so-called football schools. I go and see there the coaches are directing the players. Hey, leave the ball, leave the ball, play. One touch. I just laugh at them and I call them sometimes stupid. Because man who can play one touch, he has to have tremendous control over the ball. These days coaches, they don't allow to develop the personality of an individual player to have the ball under their control. Say that so that the boys, the players, got the mastery over the ball. So the personality is, are, are not developed. Are not developed. We, in a way, I guess, uh, what, what you're saying is we are looking at the... We are, we are concentrating on what the result that wants to be achieved without uh, the process being in place of getting uh, the individual players let, to that let level. Me t- let me, uh, uh, quoting Shunigo Shami, um, I want to give an example. Mm-hmm. I once asked him, Chunida, you, uh, why you have to acquire this control? He told me, Mr. Bolaida strategy, in a day, is to take him, is to take him from one ground to another ground, four or five matches to play him. So let him play with small tennis ball, rubber balls, so that, and Always used to tell him, you dribble, you dribble. But if, and, and when I start, so he picked up, like him, those the stalwarts, with those guys' guide, guidance, they brought up in those process. When, in 80s, I started a uh, junior coaching camp. From that coaching camp, one Indian football player was produced that his name is Tushar Rokhi. Jadip must have known him. Yeah. That time, Chunida... Siddhant also know him. He played for uh, East Bengal for a long time. So, so uh. He played for Mohan but he played he played his major part in his Bengal. Chunida used to come and see how I trained the boys. He called me one day and said, watch this, that the boy who has got good touch and along with it, you observe whether he has got that speed to carry that ball so that opponent, once bitten, cannot come in front of him. Which we see today's Ros- Messi, Ronaldo, and Chuni Goswami, P.K. Banerjee, Balram, they used to like this. My, one of my experiences, I'm telling you, once Apollo team came a few years back, I was coaching that time, Mount Sporting team. So we, in Jamshedpur, the match was played between Mount Sporting and Sao Paulo. Jun, Jun, that, 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 that team was not a professional team, the amateur team, under-23 team. I was talking to the chief coach for, through the whole night. He, was, he told me, Jay, I don't believe that such a big country of your size 
cannot produce good football. You don't do the correct thing. You are, the process is wrong. You don't have good grounds. Where you need lots of grounds. So when I went, went to England with my East Bengal team to play against Leicester City, I saw the training ground had, had at least 16 grounds. There are training grounds for Saturday, Sunday for the young kids where they are coming, they are playing. So that gentleman, I forgot his name, that famous coach, he told me, we don't do coaching. We watch the young children playing. We allow them. We allow them. And we note it. We have got 32 coaches. We note it down. What are the strong, strong point? We don't care about their weakness, weak point. Because we want to hone the strong points. And he, gave, he told me, not story, fact. He told me, I am, I'm sure you have heard the name of Kaka. I said, who, does, who, who is interested in football and that doesn't know Kaka? Well, you know, he was in one of those matches. And after six months of his joining, my whole coaches came and told, we, we must uh, chop him up. There is no chance of this boy to flourish. I told them, told them, have patience, have patience. I said, why you told sir? He said, I could see that he's an introvert. He is an introvert. He is not expressing himself, but he has got lots of talent. But another six months time, all of those coaches came back to me and told me, sir, how right you are. So we are we don't follow this process. Every can you tell me one place, one club, one the every Saturday, Sunday, from the age group of nine to twelve, boys will come and play whole day in batches, in uh, groups. You don't, you don't need a full ground. One ground you make cut it into half, make it two grounds. You, 9, 9, 18, 18, 18, 36 players playing one at a time. After 30 minutes, you change. The system has to be incorporated. Our federation, I'm sorry. I'm always in a book, bad book. Once, once again, I'm getting, uh, I don't care to be in that book. All bunch of jokers sitting in that federation office. License. What is license? License, you need to, who doesn't know. But license will, won't help you to grow your imagination, your productivity. That your that eye is that uh, doctor's uh, clinical eye. That cl clinical, you can see and make it. This guy, he has got tremendous, okay, he doesn't tackle, but his ball controls with speed. He can dribble two, three, four players. That's, a, that's an asset. Let's hone it. All, all coaches are coming out. All like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, up to Z. There's, I go to and see, hey, this ball to the pop, dribble, kar hai. Ball, pass the ball, pass the ball. What is man? Pass the ball. If you cannot dribble, you cannot pass. This is the problem. Sunil Chetri is an exception. Bajun Bhutia is an exception. I am Bijan, he is altogether an exception. Sri Goswami was the first player to score 200 goals for Mohan Bagan. He was also the second player after Sahu Mevalal to score 100 goals in the Calcutta League. Overall, in the Calcutta League, he scored 145 goals. Now, over the last few days, I mean, uh, Jaydeep has written a great story uh, talking about his personal interactions with Chuni Goswami for News League, of course, and many other tributes, many other stories have been coming out in all the major newspapers and all the football writers who've been around uh, over the years have been writing about it. Uh, and of course, we've heard now, by now, the story of uh, those magical years in the mid-60s where uh, with uh, Goswami and all these guys... They were basically dominating Calcutta football, and and uh, 
the Durand Cup was one of the oldest tournaments, is one of the oldest tournaments uh, in the world actually. I think the second or third oldest tournament in, in, in the world and uh, historically the tournament was always held in Delhi and it was the only chance for Delhi sort of football fans to get a glimpse of uh, the greats, uh, most of whom were playing in uh, Calcutta in those days. And it was a favourite tournament of uh, Sunil Goswami's and he reserved some of his best performances for then. And in fact, it used to be a bit of a tradition, Jaydeep, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the president would come to the tournament and have tea with the captains of the final, uh, the two teams in the final, during the half-time break at the final. And uh, Dr. Radhavishnan was the president at the time and he uh, seemed to have joked to Sunil Goswami that every time I come to have tea in, at this game, I'm having tea with you. So, that was the sort of uh, consistency with which that side was dominating the club scene in India at, at the time, Mohan Bagan. Um, so, uh, I want to come to you, Jaydi, for, for to go back to the, the origin sort of story. And how uh, Sunil Goswami got into the sport of football because we know also that he's a, he's a multi-sport, uh, basically an all-round athlete. Hockey, tennis, cricket and of course football so where did uh, where did his football life begin uh, how was he spotted and how how was he uh, nurtured by mohan bagan and what convinced him despite being someone who was born in bangladesh so perhaps had a natural affinity for the east bengal club but he spent his entire career uh, at bagan so uske bare mein yeah chuni uh, was of course born in kishorganj in bangladesh no doubt about it, but he never lived there. From his childhood, he has he has been a he has been a Calcutta man. So he was he and his elder brother Manik Goswami. Manik Da also played for Mohan Magan for a short period. He was a good footballer, and all of you will remember Manik Da for a different reason. Manik Da was the secretary of the Bengal Tennis Association for a long time. Uh, if you remember, you have seen him in Davis Cup again and again. Um, little shorter than Chunida, what whatever. So uh, both of them were playing where, where, when they were youngsters, they were in their early teens. They were playing in the Deshapriya Park in Calcutta. So, uh, and uh, those, those were the days when you don't have paid spotters, great uh, 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 committee being formed to spot players, to send. But Mon those, those were the amateur days. Mohan Bagan, East Bengal, all these big, 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 big club officials, they used to watch a lot of local tournaments and spot players. So BD Chatterjee, Balaida's Chatterjee was one of them, which Subhas Bhomik was also referred in his, in his uh, yeah. Balaida's Chatterjee played for Mohan Bagan for a long time. He was a boxer, he was a captain. He was also a boxer, he was a good athlete, played for Mohan Bagan. He was coach of India team on several occasions, Indian football team. So Balaida's Chatterjee was in Deshuk Park, was watching a a group of kids play. So once the once the game was over, he called these two boys and said, "He, what, uh, what, what is your name?" He said, "This boy." He says, "My name is Chuni Goswami, and this is my elder brother Manik Goswami." Then he says, "Both of you, from tomorrow onwards, come to the come to Mohan Bagan ground. I will I will take care of you." And he 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 contacted his father also. He said, "Let me take care of these two boys." And Chuni Goswami joined Mohan Bagan junior team from that day onwards. Actually, Chuni Goswami's, uh, uh, what do you say, elevation to the senior team was also very, very, uh, 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 very, uh, uh, I say, interesting. He played in 1954, he played his first, first uh, 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 league match for Mohan Bagan. He was, he was only 16 at that time, point of time. He was drafted in the side, but he never played. Because Runu Gotakuta was playing, Sattar was playing, Robin Patra was playing, Summer Banerjee was playing, all India players except for Robin Patra, all are India players, established India players, and they were in, inside forwards. So Chuni Goswami had no place. A 16 year old had no place. One day, what happened? Uh, I think Runu Gotakuta said he was in a he was he was working for port commissioners. He had night duty. He can't come. He he couldn't sleep. And I think uh, uh, Sattar also had some problem, and Robin Patra did not turn up. 
So he was called. A car was sent to his house and please come to the ground immediately. He went to the ground. And according to his, his version, he says, uh, Balaida was a, was a great, well, no, he was nurtured by Balaida's strategy, actually. So Balaida, everybody said, you have to play Chuni today. Can you? If, of course, Robin comes up, Robin Patra uh, comes up in time, then it's all right. But otherwise, you may have to play. So Balaida's strategy told him, put on the jersey. He was hesitating. He says, put on the jersey, I am telling you. He put on the jersey. It means Mohan Bagan tradition was, if anybody puts on the jersey, he can't be excluded. The, uh, if you have given him the jersey, he can't be excluded. When he mm -hmm. put on the jersey, then Robin Patra <coughs> walked in. <laughs> then everybody said, Ki, are, Robin Patra to, uh, Robin to aagya hai. Then Balaida strategy says, but Chuni has already put on the jersey. Then everyone, okay, let him play. Mm -hmm. So that was a start, 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 start with Mohan Bagan. <laughs> So that's a very fascinating <laughs> way of uh, starting with Mohan Bagan. So, you know, also it highlights uh, the role of the mentor. In You talk about any athlete who is way above anyone else. So you say supreme or sportsman, skill level talent. Uh, all of them will have that one mentor who has guided them through that very raw phase of life, right? That raw phase of life. And I think in, that, in, the, in, this, in this case with Mr. Goswami, it was Mr. Bolaida's strategy who, if, if that conversation with Mr. Bhomik, he also specified one point. That Mr. Chatterjee, and we've also spoken to Chunni Goswami's uh, nephew, Supriyo, he also said the same thing, that he would take him on a scooter, he would take him all over Calcutta, and he would just make him play games. And he didn't say, pass, karo, wapis bhago, defense, karo. Bas khel de, khelo. Because at that phase, you need to fall in love with the game, you need to fall in love with the ball. And you fall in love with the ball, then everything else... Everything else comes automatically to you. And I think that is one of the things he was also pointing out, Mr. Bhomik, that that is the problem in today's coaching, that it's getting too structured. You don't want the players to keep the ball. One touch, one touch, khelo, overlap, karo, formation, mein karo, off the ball, run, karo. But if you're not going to be adept at keeping the ball only, or ball se aap daroge, to aap to maar khaoge, janab. Aur kya hone wala? Yeah, but... Uh... Chunida was also blessed with another thing. He was he was a darling of the Mohan Bagan officials. Another man, Hirande, who was the who was the all powerful uh, general secretary of Mohan Bagan for uh, I don't know for how many years, maybe 15, 20, 30 years. I don't remember. He was also the Hirande was also the also the owner of the Days Medical in Calcutta, which is a very famous pharmaceutical uh, company. Hirande was Mohan Bagan's secretary, and Chunida was he was a darling of him, and. Of course, Chuni Goswami earned it because he was the best player of the team. So, so as you said, mentor. If Balaida's strategy was his mentor on the field, off the field, it was it was Thirande. Because of these two people, Chuni Goswami had all all the caliber. I'm not I'm not disputing anything uh, or taking the credit away from uh, by any way. But these two also backed him to the hilt all through his career. Also, Annie, it must be said, man, it was in an era that, uh, you know, I mean, aaj ke zamane mein baat karo, one club man, you're like, yeah, pagal ho gaya, kya hai, insan, kya bhai, why are you not moving around? In fact, mera, mujhe yaad hai, uh, jab mein Goa mein tha, apna ek player hota tha, Rokas Lamare. He had played for yeah. India also in between yeah. midfielder, yeah, very yeah. good, graceful player. And yeah. so, Rokas and I used to be in Goa, and uh, even after I left, and mere ko pata tha, mera isme kuch honne nahi wala. Rokas had been in Salgaonkar for close to 7 8 years and whenever i would meet him maine kaha maine kaha bhai aapne lifetime contract sign kiya hai ka yahan pe vasco mein rehne ka what is the scene why are you not moving out what is wrong with you he's like nahi bhai i enjoy the stability but at that time to play mohan bagan all your years and there's even a report that tottenham hotspur had given him an offer to come and do a trial i mean that that speaks volumes about the personality not just the player uh, no, so you see this happening only with a handful of clubs. I think AC Milan, uh, I'm talking about globally. Of course, there are a few players uh, who don't reach the international stature, perhaps, that someone like Chuni Goswami has reached. Uh, uh, you know, local players particularly who, who do even now spend a lot of their careers with a club like East Bengal, Mohan Bagan. But uh, uh, perhaps very few that attract the kind of attention that some of these players do. Uh, 
uh, you know, and, and you look at, uh, I think P.K. Banerjee, if I'm not wrong, also spent his entire career at Aryans. He didn't even play no. for one of the... He played for Eastern Railway. Okay, Eastern Railway, yeah, Eastern Railway. He didn't play for the big two, basically. Yeah, yeah because he was employed with Indian Railway. Employed yes. with Indian yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. So, so, and globally, if you look at it, you know, there's just a few clubs. I mean, uh, maybe it used to be a thing back in the day, but in uh, Milan, uh, Bayern Munich has a few cases, of course, where players have uh, similarly signed up for the youth team and then gone on to spend their entire careers. Uh, playing for the national team, some of them winning World Cups. So, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a rarity. And and uh, in fact, we, when we were doing that uh, little uh, selection game, uh, yeah. where one of the conditions was that you can't have two players that have played for the same club. So, yeah. so some of these legends uh, pop up there. And I'm surprised actually, oh, in, I'm surprised you didn't pick Chini Goswami in your squad, Jerry, sir. <laughs> I was just talking. I thought you want a serious World Eleven. So I, <laughs> you did. So but, but you know, but generally, since also you, around, I mean, I, I think we're going to head into some conversation about <clears throat> his role with the national team and how the national team did over the years. So just to lead into that, if you can sort of give a give us a sense of uh, around around that time, you say truly a World Eleven. How far off? were the best players in India from, let's say, the best players in Asia of the time? Frankly speaking, they were far, far behind. Because I, I know there was a, in, in that mid-60s, there was, there was a, uh, uh, what do you call it, Asian all-star team they used to make. Yeah. In, always a few Indians used to be there in the team. In fact, General Singh is the only Indian who has laid an Asian All-Star team. Mm -hmm. One Asian All-Star team, and I'm not very sure whether Chunigo Sami was a part of it or not. One Asian All-Star team in the mid-60s play, played against Manchester United. And the score was 6-1 in favor of Manchester United. Mm. So you can always understand what was the standard of the football. In Asia, there, there, was, there was a definite gap. There is no doubt about it. We may so have fantasized have, about it. Uh, yeah. So, just, just one thing. Uh, uh, so, when he was playing in Mohan Bagan, I've, I've heard these stories also that East Bengal tried very hard to get him to switch over. Officials from East Bengal tried very hard to get him to switch over. Uh, was there ever a case when he was close to leaving Mohan Bagan? Or I ever don't a think so. Never, never, never. It never happened. First of all, there are two reasons behind it. First, the first and foremost reason, uh, reason he he was he was like a like a he was like like a son of Mohan Bagan. He knew the kind of support he gets in, the Mon in Mohan Bagan, the kind of backing he gets from the officials, which he will never get anywhere else. Everywhere he will remain a player. But here he is like a ghar ka ghar ka hai yeah. Yeah, That is one thing. Second thing is, that foremost was, of course, his, his loyalty towards Mohan Bagan. That you cannot count out. That is always there. Secondly, there was one more thing. There was not money involved in football those days. Yeah. The payment payment was maybe maybe. What was the uh, payment like, sir? Maybe the Chuni Goswami was getting ten thousand rupees per year for playing for Mohan Bagan. Maybe like, maybe ten thousand a year. 15, 000, Fifteen thousand would be how much in today's times? Like I mean, that would be quite a lot. I think a thousand five hundred per month is is a good money those days. People's salary was two hundred rupees. Mm -hmm. It was a good money. But this way, if we're talking about. Uh, what, what year are we talking about? Uh, in the 60s. early 60s, right? Huh. Yeah. Mid 60s, uh -huh. early 60s. What so, uh -huh. just to give a comparison, uh, uh, mid 60s, 1964 is when uh, my father started his job with the government in the in the army, and uh, his first salary I think was around 120 or 130 rupees per month. Whoa! So and that's huge money, yeah. Yeah. 1500 uh, rupees a month. <laughs> Yeah. So if he was getting if he was getting fifteen thousand rupees, East Bengal would have offered him twenty five thousand rupees, not yeah. more than that. So uh, I don't think money was always a big deal. It's not like the Jobby Justin was getting nine lakhs in East Bengal and 60, 60 lakhs in eighty k. Uh, it's, it's not <laughs> to sit uh, on the bench. Uh, uh, to sit on the bench, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So the gap gap was never so much, but again uh, we must say he was he was very very loyal to Mohan Bagan. Mm. 
that Mohan Magan's five greatest players they always talk about, that they are our greatest players, whatever people say. Mm -hmm. So all of them are basically because they never, never, never left. left Mohan Magan. Uh, Gostopal, Sailan Manna, mm -hmm. Shuni Gosami, Subrata Bhattacharya, and Sataji Chakaji. These are the five players. Who, who all of most of them have gone gone on to lead lead the country, yeah. but always played for Mohan Bagan. Fair enough. So I think we've spoken about Mohan Bagan right now, but it's also important that we speak about uh, Chuni Goswami's time uh, with the national team and what a time that was with the national team. No matter how far you buy it, uh, you might be behind, say, someone like uh, Manchester United and so on. But uh, mm -hmm. I mean, arguably, no one can. I mean, arguably, yeah, you cannot. There is no point. Also, that was the most. A uh, successful period for the Indian football team. Period. Uske aage matlab argument ya debate karne ki zarurat bhi nahi. Main aapko ek thode stats bataata hu. From 1956 to 1964, the Indian team played 47 matches, right? Now don't uh, say ki ye bahut kam matches khele. At that time, that was the amount of matches you were playing regularly. Uh, they won 25 of them. Well, this is Group over. Four. This is over eight years, huh? Eight years, yeah, eight yeah, years. Yeah. 47 games over eight years. Mm -hmm. And uh, 125, drew four, lost 18. But now, this is, the, this is the one that really caught my eye. In those 47 games, they've scored 102 goals. Hoi, hoi, hoi. That tells you about the attack line. Conceded 78, agreed, because also the formation they would play. And success rate was 53%. So much so, because of this, this success in the field, here is what all they've won. Asian Games 1962 gold medal, which we're going to talk about, what they did in Indonesia. Asian Cup 1964, when again Mr. Chunni Goswami was the captain. Both these uh, tournaments, Chunni Goswami ji was the captain. Murdika Cup 1959, joint runners up. And Murdika 1964, runners up. Oof. And just, just, just for some information for all our people watching that, that famous trio, Chunni Goswami, PK Banerjee, and of course Tulsidas Balaram. Uh, Tulsi das Balaram in, whenever they would play together, total number of goals they scored. 13 by Chunni Goswami, PK Banerjee, 13 goals. Tulsi Das Balaram, 8 goals. I mean, 26 or 8. 34 goals, they hit these three. Mare the. Oof. What an attack line that was. Yeah. And, and I don't know if we'll ever find an attack line like that. And there's no point going down that route. But sir, I think let's just, just start talking about uh, a few strategies. And uh, no talk of that team can be complete without talking about the coach, Mr. S.A. Rahim. And how that team was, say, let's say, 1960 Olympics. Uh, 1960 Olympics, mein jo, even though they didn't get past the group stages, they put a good account of themselves versus Hungary and France. But the coming together of that team was put from way before 1960, right? And his practices and everything, what he wanted to do. Yeah, because uh, I have spoken personally to most of these players of the 1960 Olympic and 62 Asian Games team. They all think their best performance was... Most of them think that they, their performance has, has in 1960 Olympics has always been overlooked. Because they say, Asian Games, we were champions, no doubt yeah. about it. But we played teams against France and Hungary, Hungary, which were very, very strong team. And Hungary almost brought their World Cup side yeah. for the simple reason Hungary was a communist country. So there was no, no, no difference between professional and amateur players. They used to play the same team in the Olympics and the Asian Games in the in the in the World Cup because uh, in their country everybody was amateur basically. No, in fact, uh, so, uh, in the beginning the the World Cup it took a while for the World Cup to pick up and become the sort of preeminent football tournament in the world that it is now uh, because the Olympics had football from much earlier and and uh, before the World Cup began, so the, the Olympic gold medal was actually probably for a long time the most sought after. Uh, prize in football, also. No, certainly. And, or in I, fact, in, uh, 60 in the Rome mein Olympics, hua tha, to I hmm. suppose it's also in the neighborhood for the European teams. No, what I mean to say that that uh, that uh, none of the European teams, apart from Hungary, mm -hmm. brought their professional players. Like 1958, if you look at 1958 World Cup, France France is the semi finals. Yeah. Mm. But in 60 Olympics, when India played France, it was a completely different side. The, the, none of those professional players played in that team. Mm -hmm. Amateur mm -hmm. players, but very good players. They played. Very important but, that this point uh, is made. Hungary, when we discuss about it. Yeah. Uh, so Hungary is so. The, all all these people say he. Uh, all these players used to tell me 
that our match against Hungary and France were perhaps our best because we were playing against European sides. And in, against France, we almost won. We almost won. We were, I think the score was 1 1, if I'm not one, wrong. 1 1. Yeah, one, one. Yeah. One, one. India, India was leading by a goal. And I think one mistake by Amar Bahadur in the top, on the top of the box, it was a misfass or something, they got the, uh, got the uh, equalizer. So, 60 all. Arjun, actually, in 1952 Olympics, India lost to Yugoslavia 10 1. Yeah. And Mr. Rahim was the coach. That day, he he made a made it a point. Now he will he will build his own site. Time lagay. Which build karne mein. Time, which he started building from the 54 55. So 56 Melbourne Olympics, then 58 Asian Games semi final Melbourne Olympics semi final 58 Asian Games semi final. The uh, 59 Mardega runners up 60 Olympic good show. After qualifying, India play, India won the pre-Olympics and then went on to qualify. And which culminated into 1962 Asian Games gold medal. So, so he, he started building his team <coughs> from 1955, 54-55 onwards. And he brought it down to 1962. It took him many years to, seven, eight years to build a perfect site for this. So he, he uh, actually, uh, uh, Pradigda told me once that... When he was, when we were leaving, we were they were mostly practicing in 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 uh, uh, in at the Ghosemal Stadium in Hyderabad. Hyderabad, yeah. yeah. Hyderabad. He said when we were leaving, uh, we we're about to leave in a day or two. He always used to tell us, "This should bring us the gold medal." Aapko ek tofa dena hai hamko. Aap log ham mere ko ek tofa denge. A gold medal Jarul Laude. Because he believed now it, the, the, the team has really picked and this team will win. Also, also sir, uh, Annie, I'll get you into it because uh, possibly even though they lost that game versus Hungary, uh, till date if you go back to people who were covering the game and possibly part of the game, they're saying this was probably Indian football's best ever performance over a period of 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. The game which they played versus Hungary, 2-1 Jovo Harem. And interestingly, this is the pure example of why you need an Indian coach because he understands your players and he can get them to move mountains for you because that communication is there and that trust factor is there. So, Raheem Saab, in fact, was the formation of the 3 to 5 ki jo formation. Hai. He had taken it from the Hungarian sides that were so successful at world level. Just imagine watching the game. I'm so bored because there is one forward. Hai. चार पीछे पांच पीछे कभी तीन पीछे पता नहीं कहां कहां से भाग के आ रहे हैं वहां पे पांच भाई साहब पांच बॉडी स्कूल में खेलते थे हम फोर राइट आउट राइट इन लेफ्ट इन लेफ्ट आउट एंड दैट टाइम इट वाज ओवरलैप सेंटर फॉरवर्ड नहीं होता था उस टाइम बट उतना ओवरलैपिंग नहीं होता था उस टाइम पे सो एवरीवन इज स्टिकिंग टू योर पोजीशन इन प्लेइंग मस्ट बी सच एन एक्साइटिंग टाइम टू वॉच फुटबॉल है या एंड यू कैन सी बाय द नंबर ऑफ गोल्स दैट दिस इज अ इंटरनेशनल कंपटीशन वेयर इफ यू लुक इफ यू लुक एट थिंग्स टुडे in total, in these 47 matches, between what India scored and what they conceded, it's almost 200 goals. Yeah. You know? So, if you per goal average, you can see goal per game. Ke beech aapko dekhne ko mil hai. And let's, let's be honest, uh, we watch football to watch goals. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah or at least some, it's something exciting. Man. Yeah, it's no, just too, I, what, me... I suppose, in many ways, the goal is the pinnacle of the excitement that you can have in a game, right? So, the climax. The, yeah, like the, that <laughs> ultimate, the ultimate moment when your team scores, I guess. It must have been something else to watch these sides play. And I don't know if you... Uh, so, what you talked about earlier about this Asian All-Star 11 playing against United and losing by 6-1. Maybe there are many factors involved. I guess those players didn't play together ever... Man United must have been a well-oiled side at that time, uh, one of the biggest. Uh, also. Yeah, when, when, when the team, the, when England won the World Cup in 1966, we can always understand what yeah. kind of team Manu used to be. And was. another thing, another another very pertinent point you have you have you have picked up, the Asian All Star picking up was a haphazard affair. Ah, वो तो उसमें वहाँ भी politics होता होगा. सारे federation वाले कि हमारा एक ले लो हमारा एक दो ले लो कोटा कोटा बेस्ट होता था मैं 80s तक देखा हूँ यार तुमने परमिंदर सिंह को ले लिया 
फोन चला गया एफएफ से कि यार प्रसून बैनर्जी को भी इंक्लूड कर लो तो उसको भी इंक्लूड कर लिया गया है मतलब बड़े क्लब्स के ऑफिशियल से और रीजनल जो सिलेक्टर्स हैं उनसे आया होगा प्रेशर तो because he had a, that 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 he even even in private he used to tell people this advantage i got because he used to be the secretary of the hyderabad football association also so he had a vote in the aff mm-hmm. anyone who has a he was not only the coach mm-hmm. he was all, he was Board an member. executive committee member member of the uh, federation and a vote in the federation so it 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 used to be there used to be problems there used to be problems but he somehow managed to uh, and uh, i have heard i don't know that he was a very pragmatic people if he taking 18 players he will take 15 players of his own and one or two he might say okay ek ek aap batao kya kar sakte hain smart guy unko afford gaya unka 14 wo hi khelega jo wo khilayega jaise 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 kabaddi last asian games jab hum gold medal nahi jeete the वो हार गए कोई कॉम्पिटिशन ही नहीं है हमारे लिए तो हमने जो एक्स्ट्रा वाले जो दो तीन स्पॉट है instead uh, there were these guys who were you know along for the ride anyway uh, we were so uh, yeah yeah 3 to 5 i wanted to ask about one sorry sorry but this one second i just want to ask about one game if you if you have any knowledge of this game this is of course before this time but because we were talking about sort of national sides playing against european clubs after the 48 games uh, london games the indian team apparently went on a bit of a tour and one of the games they played was against ajax amsterdam which of course we all know as uh, one of the well probably best academy sides and one of the top clubs i guess in europe and that game the indian side won by a massive margin do you have any uh, sort of information on this game yeah i have uh, the thing is that india went on touring a lot of places at that time and that ix team was an amateur side they always played against amateur sides they never played against because uh, uh, if you uh, i will i will give you the source source of the uh, uh, i uh, while writing my book in 2003 on indian football then i went back to the library and a, a lot of places and uh, a lot of backups i uh, found out they were all amateur matches we were playing uh, but we, at that time mewala scored a lot of goals i think he came back from europe scoring around 40 50 goals he, he scored by that time when he when he came back but they played good football uh, sir so arjun was saying something ha nahi i'm bringing it back to 3 uh, to 5 थ्री टू फाइव कैसे ऑपरेट होता था मतलब मैं तो ये सोच रहा हूँ आप थ्री टू फाइव खेल रहे हो और दूसरी टीम अगर थ्री टू फाइव खेल रही से आपने हंगरी के साथ खेला है the people you've taken this formation from and uh, तो मतलब आप and जो because also the thing is we must say that our statistician Mr. Gautam Roy has helped us a lot with this so what he said at that time ज्यादा interchanging of position नहीं होता था you stick to your positions तो अगर आपके पांच फॉरवर्ड खेल रहे हैं देन योर डिफेंसिव ड्यूटीज यू डोंट नीड टू कम बैक फॉर डिफेंसिव ड्यूटीज आपने आगे ही रहना है जनाब जब बॉल आपके पास आई है फिर आपको काम करना है तो इन इन अ सेंस जो दो मिडफील्डर्स एंड थ्री स्टॉपर बैक्स जो आपके खेल रहे हैं दे हैव टू हैंडल योर डिफेंसिव ड्यूटीज एंड मे बी दैट्स अ रीजन व्हाई सो मेनी गोल्स वर बीइंग स्कोर्ड एज़ वेल एंड कंसीडर्ड बिकॉज़ दैट न्यूमेरिकल एडवांटेज पर से वुड ऑलवेज बी विद द अटैकर्स या That is true, and कैसे हुआ आप पूछ रहे हैं उसमें यह मैं बोल सकता हूँ आपको कि इट टूक टाइम फॉर मिस्टर रहीम टू एडॉप्ट दिस सिस्टम ऑल्सो इन टू स्टार्ट विथ स्टार्ट हिस्टोरिकली इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी फोर वेन दंगुलर फुटबॉलर फुटबॉल टूर्नामेंट वॉज हेल्ड इन कैलकटा सो दैट टाइम इंडिया 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 हैड ए कोच हिज नेम वॉज एल्बर्ट फ्लैटली 
Hmm. Albert Albert Flatley was was not exactly the national coach, but he was appointed by the National Federation to look after all the teams and everything. But Mr. Rahim was the coach, and in in the, and uh, according to Amal Datta, the former coach who was a member of that 54 team, he, Amal Datta also played the 1954 Asian Games. That Amal Datta told me that in the in that Flatley said, let us switch over to the three back system. But Mr. Rahim did not like it, and he overruled flatly. And thoda bahut has bhi ho gaya dono ke andar. But Mr. Rahim had to say that I have at the moment two back system I am playing, and the two two backs are Azizuddin and Sailan Manna. They are old time defenders. If I switch over to three back system, the kind of movement they have to do. Which they will not be able to adopt. Mm. So he he brought back the and uh, he he finally switched to three back system from the 1956 Olympics when Salam played in the in the in the middle. That is the thing. And later on, when 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 in the if you are talking about the 1962 Asian Games, a lot of changes which you are talking about. That mm. time, Trilok Singh and Chandrasekhar were playing the two wing backs, so they were adapt to the system. So Rahim also also did it according to the availability of his players. He That's the quality of a good coach. Coach, he did not push the system from top. He 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 saw whether he has players to adapt to the system, and he went according to that. So, you have 1962, Annie. You brought up because now in 1962, Rahim Saab has now changed his formation and he's taken cue from Brazil, the Brazil of that time, where he's gone to a 4-2-4. Ah, boy. चार डिफेंडर दो बीच में भगवान भरोसे वो जो दो आपके मिडफील्डर थे बिकॉज उन्होंने सारा आपका काम करना था वहां पे बीच में सो दे हैड टू हैव योर इंजन ऑफ अ लाइफ टाइम एंड देन यू हैड योर फोर फॉरवर्ड्स इन व्हिच थ्री ऑफ व्हिच वर ऑफ कोर्स मिस्टर चुन्नी गोस्वामी पीके बनर्जी एंड मिस्टर बलाराम सर एंड यू नो सम क्रेजी स्टोरीज आल्सो लाइक आपने अभी यहां पे बताया हैदराबाद में कैंप होता था उनका कैंप लगा है फॉर मोर देन अ मंथ इन हैदराबाद and rahim saab ne unko he's not given them uh, some plush place to stay stadium mein thirate the wahan pe stadium ke aas paas aur wahan pe unka camp laga jahan pe ragdai hui hai zor ki ragdai hui hai achhi khasi aur uske baad unko taiyari karke bheja hai wahan pe asian games ke liye upar se i think it's pretty well documented that uh, the uh, india was not giving them enough foreign exchange because of some economy issues or something however har har ke wo unko thoda bahut mila hai I think allowed नहीं था वो foreign exchange हमारे rules बहुत tight थे किसी को allowed नहीं था ले जाना the allowances what you were allowed to carry was very little. No, eventually they were asked to drop a number of players and take a fewer number of players and uh, move ahead for the Asian Games. उसके बाद वहाँ पे गए तो वहाँ पे because uh, political tensions from the uh, Arab states and from China, so उसमें कुछ था कि not give ID cards to teams from Taiwan and Israel. and one of the indian officials spoke against about it he was part of the olympic committee as well and ever since he spoke about it he was sent back home to india and the entire country press uh, fans indonesia mein they were against the indian team from the word go so ye jo hum kehte na ki final mein it was such a tough affair because you had 80000 people against you they were used to it by then because throughout their asian games uh, journey from in 1962 they the crowd had been against them the press had been against them so in a sense if anything i think it got them even stronger ki jahan ke because aksar kya hota hai jaisi so you look, i don't know if you agree with me ki aap pura tournament acha khel rahe ho and then suddenly you meet the final and everyone has appreciated you throughout the, in the build up to the final but then comes the final and you have a hostile 90000 crowd that is jeering you everything you're doing and that can really throw you off the rails But if you've been used to it throughout the tournament from the start, if anything, you'll be stronger by the time you get to the final. And you could see what they did to Korea. The team they lost two nil to at the opening game. Unni ko jaake unko fir dhoya us match mein. Ha, wo matlab they needed a jolt, and uh, fortunately it came in the very first match. Yeah, that is that. That was it. Fortunately, it came in the very first match. So. Uh, So uh, I I believe uh, Chunida told me that Rahim Sab was very very upset. He couldn't take the defeat in the first first match. Then they made some changes. Abjal, I think Arumai Nigam was kept out. Then some whatever changes you were talking about in the formation and everything that formation was changed. Jarnail Singh was sent up. 
uh, Chenyan Singh was sent up in the semi-final because yeah. not before that against Vietnam only when when they played in the actually in the semi-final and final they played with a three-back system. If you look, Tilak Singh and uh, Chandrasekhar were playing the two two side backs, and and Arun Ghosh was playing the playing the center 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 half. A uh, center uh, what do you call it? Center center back these days. Stop of that. He was a lone stop of that because General Singh was moved up up forwards. So a uh, lot of changes he brought in between. See, uh, uh, like Prashanto Sinha, Prashanto Sinha did not play the match up to semi final. Yeah. Rambadu was playing with Franco. And Prashant and Rambadur was Rambadur, I think, was what fell ill. There is a story which I am not I am not sure how much uh, right or wrong. Ram Rambadur said I am not well, so he was asked to asked to uh, uh, take rest. And uh, and Rahim sir found out that uh, Rambadur was dancing to a tune in the radio or something in a room or somewhere in the village. So he was so upset. He said, "Ye ladka kabhi nahi khelega mere saath aur." So Prashanto Sinha came in place of Franco, and Prashanto Sinha and Franco played the semi-final and final. So he made changes in the team as as and when when it is required. Of course, his biggest challenge was to play the play uh, Janel Singh as 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 a as a withdrawal centre forward, mm. which which really clicked, which yeah. clicked in the semi-final, which clicked in the final. It was a huge thing, uh, definitely. So he. Also he Whatever he did, he did according to the situation. He never had a had a static idea in mind, which you said is a sign of a good coach. Yeah, he was not he was not sticking to an <coughs> idea which he brought from, brought from India. From match to match, he was looking at things. And and you talk about the three up front, Annie, uh, and how different those three top players were. Say you talk about uh, Chunni sir. And you'd say he's adept at dribbling, taking on defenders, putting them under pressure, good with both his feet. Then you talk about PK Banerjee. He was such a direct player, and he was such a strong shooter of the ball. Both his feet again, he could shoot from distance, and he had power in his shot. And then you had the guy who used to bind them together, Balaram, probably the most intelligent of the three, especially in his off the ball movement and his moving. So, अक्सर कहते हैं ना कि आपके पास तीन खिलाड़ी होते हैं, तो एक खिलाड़ी होता है जो selfless काम करता है, where he takes your markers away. He moves defenders for giving you space to then space, move in, yeah. and that was what Balaram used to do for uh, this this trio moving forward. Uh, another player, Arjun, who is not not often uh, often spoken about, he was the he was like a like what you say like was Revelino in the Revelino in the 1970 uh, Brazil team. That was Yusuf Khan. Hmm. <coughs> Yusuf Khan was a key factor of the team. And Yusuf Khan's biggest, biggest, uh, uh, what do you call it? Biggest asset was he could play in ten positions. Literally, he could play in ten, ten positions. In Hyderabad City Police, he has played from right back to left out, all ten positions he has played. So Yusuf Khan was also a very, very key factor in the centre line. So uh, with with the three, of course, these three were the were the were the star of the teams. Because Yusuf Khan was 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 also Rahim Khan, Rahim Sahab is one of the What do you call it? Uh, cog in the wheel. Final, final question. I think uh, whenever we talk about that team and uh, people like us who follow football, of course, know Jarnail Singh and his contribution to the game and uh, the qualities that he used to possess. But I don't think uh, he's been given his due uh, by I don't know if the rest of the community or the rest of the country at least, as far as what he was, uh, the the type of Indian player that he was, which was so different. From uh, any of the other players, who was silky, who was smooth, who was skillful, but here you had a powerful guy. You had a guy who was aggressive. You had a guy who used to play with his heart, man. जो उन्होंने एशियन गेम्स खेला है, स्टेचेस के साथ खेला है. बीच में स्टेचेस खोल के खून निकल रहा है, भाग रहा है आदमी. मैं मेरे पास ऐसा ही टीममेट होगा, तो मैं उसको देख के ही मेरे अंदर एक वो ना अंदर से मैं ऑन हो जाऊँगा खेल <laughs> just, just to get a sense of uh, Chunni Goswami the person and uh, beyond uh, the the superstar, what I did was I did get in touch with his nephew. His name is Supriyo Goswami. Uh, he's also a uh, pretty well-known sports producer. He's worked for channels like Star Sports, Sony. So we worked together, and uh, this was my conversation with him and uh, how he was reliving some of the times that he spent with the great Chunni Da or Chunni Uncle, as he used to call him. My father says that his first memories of my uncle would be when my father was in class six and he was in class ten. 
Hmm. He was around about four years elder to my father. And those days in Calcutta, you had, uh, they used to call it a uh, height wala tournament, where they used to, there used to be a cut-off mark, five foot five, five foot six, and hmm. anyone below that could play that tournament. Uske upar allow nahi karte the. My uncle used to take my dad over there because my uncle used to think of him like he was, my dad was his talisman, lucky mascot. So my dad used to accompany him and he used to take him and he, my dad used to watch him play. And my dad says that even then, I was like normal stuff for him, which he would do years later when he yeah. started playing for India and Mohan Bagan. But even then, class 10, he was just about... Team, my dad was about 11. He was brilliant when it came to dribbling. So those are my dad's first memories. Mera first memories to do with cricket. Because I was around about 9, 8, 9 years old when he came to Jamshedpur. And uh, that's when Tata Football Academy started. And he yeah. was the first director. So I still remember meeting him for the first time. If a second time, but he asked me, Kya karte? what are you doing? I said, I've just started playing with the leather ball. So he says that... Uh, Play in the V for the first few overs. Hmm. When you do that, you can frustrate the best of the bowlers. So those are my first memories of meeting the great man. And uh, the amount of cricket you've covered now, uh, play in the V still holds true. Yeah, yeah. So any play top quality v, batsman, you play in the V, then you know he's a top quality batsman. Exactly, exactly. The one thing which my dad says was that, and I don't know if you can drop parallels with someone like a Sachin Tendulkar, is that Tendulkar played a lot of matches while growing up, thanks to Ramakant Archvikar. Archvikar used to make him sit on a scooter and Tendulkar used to go from one ground to another ground, another ground in Bombay. Play a lot of matches. Hmm. My dad has a very similar take on the way uh, Chuni uncle grew up. He used to travel to just about any place in Calcutta to play football tournaments. There was nothing as practice. I guess the whole practice thing came much later when he joined Mohan Bagan. Then obviously uh, the national colours. You had someone like Saeed Abdul Rahim who was such an inspirational figure then, the coach. But for starters, my dad's take was that growing up, and he, and he never restricted himself to per se proper Calcutta town. He lived in Jodhpur Park, which is South Calcutta. And my dad, we lived in a place called Agurpara, which is North 24 Perganas. But hmm. my uncle used to travel literally the length and breadth of Calcutta just to play football tournaments. Didn't matter who the opposition was, there was no money involved, just the passion of the game and play matches. The one thing, he was very accommodating. That's one thing that has stayed with me even after all these years. That uh, Obviously, growing up, we didn't know who he was. But we knew he was Chuni Goswami. But the, hmm. but the stature of the man, we got to know much later. So growing up, class 7, class 8, we used to meet him and we used to give our gyan about what we thought about football and this. He would patiently listen. Hmm. And then he would present his point of view. Even the first few years, like when he came to Jamshedpur, late 80s, this, that, he used to come to our place. You had friends coming. Everybody used to give gyan about football, this, that. He used to listen. He used to give his point of view. Like I said, very accommodating. But he was always willing to listen to what others had to say about sport per se football. And then he would silently present his point of view. So, so, so could I ask you, so, uh, you know, when a man talks about football, you kind of get a sense of his ethos and how he perceives the beautiful game, how it should be played. And there are so many different ways of playing the game. There's no one correct way of playing. Uh, did you ever get a sense of what his approach to football was then? The one thing that remains with me after all these years is he never spoke about his method. It's just that my dad, my the other uncles in the family, they spoke about how brilliant a dribbler he was. And uh, he could shoot with both feet, right and left. It doesn't mm. happen that often. Equally strong of both feet. But my conversations with him about football, primarily, I would say, mid-90s, late 90s, his take on where the game is going. And that, when I think of 20 years later, I think it's quite astonishing because whatsoever he said then, mentioned then, I think is very even, very much relevant today as far as modern day football is concerned. A, b- a bit of insight into that conversation. What what was his take on uh, football then in, in mid-1990s? His take as to where the game is going, if you ask me, because if you look at Indian football then, we had already gone down a fair bit in the in the pecking order. His, ga- his first take was you have to be strong because if you are not strong, you will not be able to hold on. 
and quality opposition will blow away. Forget about Europe, South America, Asia itself will get blown away. So his mm. first take was that people need to get strong. I remember in one of these conversations, one of our family friends was there, and he went to the extent of saying, "Ki guys, we need to start having beef because that is how we go strong." And he was like, "Beef? What are you saying? Mm. Like, no, we you want to get strong because that is where football is going." Second thing. which again has stayed with me after all these years is that you need to have a pair of eyes behind your head sirf aage dekh ke daudne se you are going nowhere wo hamare zamane mein bhi probably played like that but now the way i see the game two eyes need to be here and you need to watch what is happening hmm. he spoke about position play then that people need to hold on to their positions you can't run helter skelter opposition will just roger you. you need to hold on to your positions and the other thing which used to be quite fascinating when he used to talk with my father because my father also played for mohan bagan b they used to talk a lot about off the ball running hmm. so mai samajh mein nahi aata tha but aaj itne saal baad when you watch and when you thought about to understand so these for me are the three four things strength two eyes behind your head hold on to your position and off the ball running these are the three four things that i think even then mid 90s used to talk about So we're just uh, getting away from Chunni Goswami the footballer and Chunni Goswami the person in the public eye. Uh what sort of a personality was him? Uh, was he rather you said accommodating was one. Uh, yeah. Any other traits you'd uh, The other you know, thing for me is that big wide big massive smile. Grin bolo smile bolo however you want to label it. That stayed till the last day. During his last days uh, there was a slouch walking me chalne mein dikkat hoti thi but that smile stayed till he would make people feel at ease that's that's that is how i would have put it a lot of people i have seen in front of me go and get them say introduce to him talk to him i think hmm. he had this knack of making people at ease because obviously i've seen people in absolute awe of him and i think if you look at that era i think that is that is when It's probably the fag end of the aura of Mohan Bagan and East Bengal. Started in the 60s and 70s, 80s, 90s, and he was like one of the poster boys. So people had seen him play, so they were in, they were in awe of him. He could make people at ease. Ki. No worries, आराम से जो बोलना है बोलिए, I'm here for you. Right, guys. So we are uh, wrapping up the show. So जाते जाते एक जो बात सुप्रियो ने हमें बोली थी कि ऑन द फील्ड के बारे में हमने ढेर सारी बातें कर ली एक घंटे से ज्यादा शो हो गया यहाँ पे बट ऑफ द फील्ड एंड यू नो द काइंड ऑफ ही वाज अ फैन फेवरेट एंड तब सेल्फी का जमाना तो नहीं था बट ही वाज ही ऑलवेज सेड ही बिन अ वेरी अकोमोडेटिंग पर्सनालिटी कोई भी आए बोले सर फोटो अगर ले सकते हैं आपसे मिल सकते हैं ऑटोग्राफ लें ही इज ऑलवेज बिन वेरी अकोमोडेटिंग इन योर पर्सनल वन ऑन वन इंटरक्शन विद बिकॉज बहुत सिद्धांत ना है वी मेट एन स्पोर्ट्समैन गॉन ऑन टू डू interviews and all and uh, let's be honest not all of them are the most uh, accommodating personalities many of them to just come and say ha aao yahan pe jaldi karo jo bhi karna hai chale jao what was the interaction with mr goswami like during your time as a reporter of course But, uh, mr goswami had always always been polite but he as i as i as i wrote in my article also he will not suffer fools once i once i have what i have noticed when he, when a journalist goes to him instead of journalist assessing him he will assess the journalist yeah a lot of that, <laughs> yeah. that whether this man knows enough about football whether this man knows enough about me if he thinks this man is man is serious he is doing his job properly he will talk with him otherwise yeah. he will dismiss him very politely after a couple of minutes this i have seen enough enough times so uh, i won't say he was rude but he was he was if he was aware of his status of his of his of his uh, standing in the in in the football circle i don't blame him he mm. was isn't it that's true and it's sidant and i can uh, warrant it that when we gone to do interviews with sports personalities and they're looking you up and down like this and within the yeah. first two questions you know whether that personality has judged you or not pata chal jata hai bhai aapke sath hua hai janab <laughs> बहुत बार एक बार नहीं या ये होता रहता है होता है अभी भी होता रहता है कांस्टेंटली ऑलवेज बीइंग जज्ड ऑलवेज बीइंग जज्ड दैट अ टफ लाइफ 
<laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I think that's the end of our conversation. We hope you enjoyed the show uh, as we were paying respect to the late Chunni Goswami, one of uh, India's finest ever, and part of a team that has possibly go down as India's finest ever, at least as we're speaking right now. Uh, Jaydeep Basu, Sadhant Ani, and uh, to Mr. Subhash Bombay, and also to Supriyo Goswami. Thank you so much for taking your time and joining us on our show. And also a shout out to Gautam Roy. who provided us with all the stats and info uh, with the team that was playing in the 1950s and of course of Mr Goswami's time in uh, Mohan Bagan until we meet again thank you so much for watching thoda lamba ho gaya par usme kya jaye goodbye <laughs>